Oh, followers. So for this video, I'm going to go off uh, a suggestion that someone, one of my classmates, said at school. He said he didn't tend to read much. He more preferred to watch things out of front of him, like TVs or movies or games or whatever. So he suggested that I do reading of popular books in my videos. Especially, I read a paragraph or two, and then if you want to find out more then you have to buy the book and read it. Well, I've decided not much harm can be done of this, so I'm going to start off today with one of my favourite books, or a paragraph or two from one of my favourite books. I will cover the camera with this, the camera with this, and I won't tell you what the book is actually called until the very end. Then you know if you want to get it or not from the extract that I read. So if I just put this on now, and I can start my first reading from one of my favourite books. Hedgewick cleared his throat again. Okay then, let's get down to business. Now we're all here. Excellent, good. This will of course be the last will and testament of Gordon Hedgewick, arrived last almost one year ago. Gordon has been a client of mine for the last twenty years. In that time I got to know him well. Let me pass on to you his family and friends. My deepest deepest yes, yes, yes. So interrupted waving his hand in the air. Can we just skip this part? We're already running behind schedule. Let's get to the part where we get stuff. Who gets the house? And who gets the villa? Who gets the fortune? Ah, uh, he proceeded forward in her seat. The royalties, Miss Rogers. Who gets the royalties from the books? Stephanie glanced at scholarly peasants in the corner of her eyes. She was standing back against the wall, hands in his pockets, looking at the solicitor. Well, he seemed to be looking at the solicitor. Those sunglasses could be looking anywhere. She returned her gaze to Hedgewick. She picked up a page from his desk and read from it. To my brother Fergus and his beautiful wife Beryl, she said, as Beth Stephanie did her best to hide a grin. I leave my car and my boat and a gift. Fergus and Beryl blinked. His car? Fergus said. His boat? Why would you leave me his boat? You hate the water, Beryl said. Anger rose in her voice. You get seasick. I do get seasick, Fergus said. I didn't mean that. And we already have a car, Beryl said. And we already have a car, Fergus repeated. Beryl was sitting so far up on her chair that she was almost on the desk. This gift, she said, her voice low and shuffled. Is it the fortune? Hedrick coughed nervously at a small box in his desk drawer. He slid it towards him. He looked at this box. He looked at some more. They both reached for it at the same time and Stephanie watched him slap each other's hands until Beryl snatched off the desk and tore the lid off open. What is it? That Fergus asked in a small voice. Is there a key to a safety deposit box? Is it account number? Is it? What is it? Wife, what is it? All colour had drained from Beryl's face and her hands were shaking. She blinked hard to keep the tears away as she turned the box she had looked to see and then went saw the brooch. That sound was ridiculous, nestled in the plush cushion. Fergus stared at it. This is the ugly jewel box, Bella said, her voice strangled. Fergus opened his mouth wide like a startled fish and turned to Hedrick. What else can we get? he asked, apparently. Hedrick tried another smile. Uh, your brother's love? Stephanie heard the high pitched whine, and it took her a moment to realise it was coming from Beryl. Hedrick was paying his attention to the will, trying to ignore the horrified look she was giving to Fergus and his wife.
Now, for those of you who are listening carefully, and who heard the name at some point, you will possibly know the title of the book. In this case, it is the Derek Landy written story, sorry, it's back to front in this context, Skullduggery Pleasant. Now then, if you want to read more about the story and how Stephanie goes forward, then you'll have to buy the book. It's apparently won the Red House Children's Book Award overall winner in 2008, and for those of you who may complain it's for younger children, frankly, this this series of books is one of the greatest I've ever read. So, I urge you to give it a try. See ya.